Hello everyone and welcome to Financial Accounting. In today's video I'm going to be covering Chapter 12 which goes over corporations. So we'll be talking about the organizations of corporations, the stock transactions and dividends. So the first thing that we'll start with is the characteristics of a corporation. So a corporation is a legal entity distinct and separate from the individuals who create and operate it. So as a legal entity a corporation may acquire, own and dispose of property in its own name. And that's a little bit different from other forms of businesses like partnerships or sole proprietorships. Because in this case, in a corporation, um, the corporation is the owner of any kind of property that's under its name, not directly the owners or the shareholders. So it may also incur liabilities and enter into contracts. And in this case, also the liabilities and the contracts would be under the name of the corporation. Most importantly, it can sell shares of ownership, which we call it stock. And those who acquire the stock, we call them the stockholders or the shareholders. So this characteristic gives corporations the ability to raise large amount of capital. And that's something unique for corporations. So the stockholders or the shareholders who own the stock own the corporation. They can buy and sell stock without affecting the corporation's operations or continued existence. And again, that's a big advantage for corporations that if I'm a shareholder or a stockholder, in other words, I'm an owner in a corporation, and I don't want to do this business anymore, I can easily sell these stocks or this stock to uh, others who are going to have ownership in the same company. So the transfer of ownership is much easier in corporations compared to other forms of businesses. Corporations whose shares of stock are traded in public markets are called public corporations. And these are the companies that we all hear and know about in the stock market, things like General Motors, Ford, General Electric, IBM, Microsoft, Tesla. All these big names, or these big names, they are considered to be public corporations and they're t technically traded in the stock market. Corporations whose shares are not traded publicly are usually owned by a small group of investors and are called non-public or sometimes called private corporations. So a private corporation is still a corporation, but its stock are not or is not traded in the stock market. All stockholders of, of all corporations have limited liability. So this means that creditors usually may not go beyond the assets of the corporation to satisfy their claims. And, of course, that's an advantage for the shareholders, but it's not an advantage for the creditors. Because as a shareholder, if anything goes wrong in the company and the company has to file for bankruptcy, the most I can lose is the amount I invested in the corporation. But my personal assets are going to be always protected. Therefore, the financial loss that a stockholder may suffer is limited to the amount invested. And as I said earlier, it's not very good news for the creditors because if the company that I lent money files for bankruptcy, the most I'm going to get is the amount of the leftovers or what's available in the corporation after it files for bankruptcy. But I'm not, I cannot follow the shareholders. I cannot get any cash from the assets uh, of the shareholders. So the stockholders control a corporation by electing a board of directors. This board meets periodically to establish corporate policies. It also elects the chief executive officer or the CEO and other major officers to manage the corporation's day-to-day -day affairs. So uh, I hope you understand that the chief executive officer is considered to be like the senior executive of the company, but still represent the company's management and they deal with the day-to-day -day operations of the business. This slide gives us a good presentation for the level of relationship between different um, organization uh, parties. So we have the stockholders, and these are the owners of the, of the company. And then they elect the board of directors, where they, which basically provide some kind of uh, uh, setting the policy for the corporation, and also they provide some kind of oversight for, for managers. The board of directors are the ones who hire the officers or the senior executives of the of the corporation, and these are the ones who manage the day-to-day -day, um, um, transactions and, and uh, the decisions of, of the business. And then the officers, they hire their employees, and the employees will actually implement what the officers wants to perform for the business. 
So as a separate entity, a corporation is subject to taxes. And that's, that's one of the major disadvantages for a corporation because they go through what we call it double taxation. So corporations must pay federal income taxes on their income, and also stockholders must pay income taxes on the dividends they receive from the corporations. So as a shareholder, I end up paying taxes twice, once through the corporation itself, and the other, other time is whenever I receive dividends from the corporation, and then I have to pay taxes on these kind of dividends. So now let's see the advantages and disadvantages of corporations. I just want to let you know that um, most successful businesses worldwide, not just in the United States, are structured as corporations. So it's one of the most successful form of a business for any kind of business. So the advantages, um, separate legal existence, so a corporation exists separate from its owners. Uh, continuous life, the corporation life is not, sep is not separate from its owners, therefore or it's actually it's separate from its owners, therefore it's exi it exists indefinitely. So if the founder of the corporation um, dies, then if the, the existing shareholders would still be able to run um, the business. So usually a company would be able to survive as long as um, the product or the service they're providing is something that is still in demand. Uh, and the life of the owner or the, the founder of the company is not something that's going to affect the life of the corporation. So that's why we, we, we translate that into what, what's called continuous life. Raising large amounts of capital, the corporation form is suited for raising large amount of money from shareholders, and that's how they usually uh, raise it by issuing or yeah, by selling the, the, sharehold, the shares in the stock market. Then we have the ownership rights are easily transferable. So a corporation sells shares of ownership called stock. The stockholders of a public company can transfer their shares of stock to other stockholders through stock markets such as the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. There's also limited liability. A corporation's creditors usually may not go beyond the assets of the corporations uh, to satisfy uh, their claims. Therefore, the financial loss that a stockholder may suffer is limited to the amounts invested. How about the disadvantages? Uh, one of these disadvantages is that owner uh, is separate from management, or owners are separate from management. So stockholders control management through a board of directors. The board of directors should represent shareholders' interest. However, the board is often more closely tied to management than to shareholders. As a result, the board of directors and management may not always have uh, or behave in the best interest of the stockholders. The other disadvantage that we just talked about was, was the double taxation of dividends. So as a separate legal entity, a corporation is subject to taxation. Uh, therefore, net income distributed as dividends would be taxed once at the corporation level. And then once distributed, it's going to be taxed again, or the shareholders are going to be taxed again on the individual level. Then the third and last disadvantage is, is uh, regulatory costs. So a corporation must satisfy many requirements such as those required by the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. So um, the Securities and Exchange Commission might, might exert a lot of requirements and regulations uh, for corporations to follow, and that can be one of the disadvantages. Now let's talk about forming a corporation. So the first step in forming a corporation is to file an application of a corporation within the state. So state and corporation laws differ, and corporations often organize in those states with the more or the most favorable laws. Uh, for some reason, the state of Delaware has the most favorable laws, and that's why many of, of the largest companies are incorporated in Delaware. So here we have uh, like a sample of uh, publicly traded companies that I assume that many of us can relate to, and maybe if not all of them, but at least many of them. So companies like Caterpillar, Delta Airlines, the Dow Chemical Company, Google, General Electric, Home Depot, Kellogg, and so on. So you can see that most of these companies, even though their headquarters are in different states, most of them, like I think with the exception of two, they are incorporated in Delaware or the state of Delaware. So uh, with the exception of GE, where it's um, um, incorporated in New York, and Starbucks, where it, it's incorporated in the same 
state where it has its headquarters, which is Washington. So after the application of incorporation has been approved, the state grants a charter, or, or sometimes we call it Articles of Incorporation. The Articles of Incorporation formally creates the corporation, but it's well known as the charter. So the corporate management and board of directors then prepare a set of bylaws, which are the rules and procedures for conducting the corporation's affairs. Costs may uh, be incurred in organizing a corporation. These costs include legal fees, taxes, corporation, uh, I mean state and corporation fees, license fees, promotional costs. So such costs are debited to an expense account and entitled organization expense. And this is typically how we record this journal entry. So corporation organizing cost of 8500 on January 5th would be recorded on January 5th. You can see we're debiting the expense because expenses are typically debited. So organization expenses for 8500 and we credit cash for 8500 And the explanation for that would be paid cost of organizing the corporation. One of the things that's also related to um, the issuance of stock is what we refer to as the paid-in capital. So the two main sources of stockholders' equity are paid-in capital, or what we refer to as contributed capital, and the other thing is the retained earnings. So the original contribution of the shareholders uh, when the corporation is initially uh, created is what we refer to as the contributed capital or the paid-in capital. Any kind of profits or net income that they decide to retain in the business or keep in the business, that's the second source of income, which we call it the retained earnings. So the main source of paid-in capital is from issuing stock. And we'll talk about that in more details in the coming video.